Hi everyone, Aaron from Golf Custom here. Um, I'm going to show you today how to heat treat a 01 tool steel knife in your own shop with just a few simple tools. Um, the very first thing is your quench oil. And the quench oil is what you put the blade into when it's been heated up to red hot to cool it down fast and make the blade hard. In this case, we're just using vegetable oil, which is you know cheap and easily available and it works very well. The next thing you're going to need is a pair of tongs to hold the hot steel. Now, I use these big vice grips and they were quite cheap. I think they're about six or seven bucks and they work quite well. If you can find blacksmith's tongs, then that's great, but they're not necessary. Something like this works well. And the offset head keeps your hand out of the path of any possible flame when you're quenching the, the steel in the oil. The next thing you need is a container to hold your quenching oil. Now this is actually a small uh, wine bucket that I got from a kitchen supply place. Kitchen supply places are great for this kind of thing because they have lots and lots of different things that would work. Anything that you buy needs to be either aluminum or stainless steel, no plastic because you'll melt through it. Um, Bay Marie containers, anything you can find that's you know long enough to fit your knife in is, is perfect. Then you're going to need a torch. Now, I use a Burnsomatic TS4000. Uh, this is a relatively expensive torch, it's about $40. Um, it works very well and it works with both map gas and propane. So if you need a hotter flame for brazing or something else, then this is a great torch. If you are looking for cheaper torches, there is one thing that you need to be aware of. And that is, if you have a look at this torch, the air inlet holes for the burn tube uh, right down here, which means they're almost six inches away from the head of the, the flame. On this cheaper torch, the air inlet holes are only about an inch away from the head of the flame. And what happens is that the burnt gases will recirculate into the air inlet hole when being used in a forge because you know something else is in such close proximity to it. So if you're looking for a less expensive torch, the one thing you need to be aware of is to try and get a torch that has the air inlet holes as far away from the head as possible. If it's too close, like this one, then it'll work fine as a blowtorch, but it won't work for uh, use with a forge and for heat treating knives. The next thing you need is a forge. Now, this one is a very simple homemade one. It's basically just made of two fire bricks that have semicircular uh, channels cut into them and an inlet hole at the front. Now, the flame goes in at an angle, angled toward the rear, and then swirls around the burn chamber before it exits the back. Now, having the flame right at the front lets you move the blade in and out while you're heat treating it to get an even heat from the, the like handle of the blade all the way to the tip. If you have the blade right, if you have the flame entering at the back, then you'll be able to get the tip very hot, but you'll have a hard time getting the rear end, like the tang and the ricasso of the blade hot. So I recommend having the entry hole at the front. It works very well. The next thing you're gonna need are fireproof gloves. I use welding gloves uh, and these work pretty well. They're not the most comfortable, but you need something that's quite flame retardant because if your quenching oil catches on fire or, you know, it's, spits up a big burst of flame when you first put the hot blade in. It can burn your hands quite badly if you don't have gloves on, so I recommend wearing gloves. And then finally, unless you don't, unless you like burning your house down, I highly recommend that you have a fire extinguisher on hand. Um, using water to extinguish an oil fire is extremely dangerous and you shouldn't do it. So make sure that you have a dry powder fire extinguisher at hand that is suitable for uh, use on oil fires. Here you can see how the propane torch is set up in relation to the forge. The flame is angled upwards and toward the rear of the forge. This helps ensure that the heat is distributed as evenly as possible by causing the flame to form a spiral around the inside of the forge. After letting the forge heat up for several minutes, the next step is to preheat our quench oil. Warm quench oil will actually cool the steel faster because it forms less vapor bubbles around the blade during quench. 
To preheat the quench oil, I'm simply heating up a piece of scrap steel and then plunging it into the quench container. Now it's time to start heating our knife blade. Notice that I'm constantly moving the blade around in the forge. This helps ensure that I don't overheat any particular part of the blade. What we're looking for is an even, dull, cherry red color. If parts of the blade get hotter than dull cherry red, then they may end up being brittle. You can see that the thin parts of the blade heat up the fastest. Keep them away from the direct flame and make sure to continuously move the blade in order to get the heat as even as possible. It will take a few minutes. After the blade is an even, dull cherry red color, remove it quickly from the forge and plunge it straight down into the quench oil. You only have a few seconds to get it out of the forge and into the oil before the blade cools too much. Be careful of where your hands are, as the oil will often catch fire on the surface for a few seconds. After the blade is in the oil, make gentle slicing motions with it to help cool the blade. Do not move the blade sideways, as this may cause warping. After the blade has cooled from the quench, we need to test that it has hardened properly. To do this, we run a file over the edge and spine of the knife. If the knife was hardened properly, then the file will simply skate over the surface of the steel. At this point, the knife will be extremely hard, but also quite brittle. If you were to drop it accidentally, it would probably shatter. So the last thing we need to do is to temper the knife. This process gives up some hardness in the steel in exchange for much more toughness. To temper the knife, we simply heat it to an elevated temperature and keep it there for a while. In this case, we'll be heating it to approximately 400 degrees Fahrenheit and keeping it there for two hours. I'm using a toaster oven for this process, but you could also easily use a regular household oven. After the tempering process is complete, your knife blade will be hard and hold a great edge, but it will also be tough and resilient. At this point, the blade is ready for final finishing and use.